Hello and welcome to a very special hobby video everybody. Um, today I'm going to be covering part one of my cheap basing. Uh, if you want to see another element of it, check out the All Game Terrain where I talk about a couple of the products I picked up from them. Today we are talking about the use of air dry clay. Now this is not anything new, bold, or uh, a grand discovery in the scientific field by me. This is just something that uh, effectively has been used for a number of different things. Uh, you could check out Scruffy Crow. He has one where he makes a catapult for a old dwarven army. But in this case, I figured why not touch on it for a bit of a smaller video. And I got a couple examples here. Now, I'm not a very good sculptor. And by no means do I claim to be an expert. Some of this might look like a complete and utter mess. But first off, we're going to point out, I picked up this large tub over here that to the left of uh, two pounds of clay for about three, four dollars from the local store. It's made by Crayola. I am not sponsored by Crayola. I don't like crowns that much. <laughs> I'm joking, but... I'm still not sponsored by them. And I thought, hey, this might be something that could be very useful to add to my bases because I don't want to use up all my milli putt on making tiny, tiny little, I'm going to put this right here, tiny little spots and hills on bases uh, to uh, make the basing material not look so flat. And that's the ge grand, na general concept here. So I did a couple different things. I sculpted. First off, we have a. Uh, let's just pull this forward. Uh, this little tablet thing. I had put a like a really simple design in it. I don't know how well that's going to pop up because it hasn't been primed. But I cut it. Or I basically rolled out a piece of the clay. I used a uh, a hobby knife to just cut it, and then I uh, used a toothpick to put the indentions in it. These are just little rocks that were leftovers. You might as well use them. The other thing is you can throw it in, uh, you can crumble it up and throw it into a base mixture. Some examples of little rocks that I'm going to eventually glue onto a base that they can be painted like a stone or whatever. And then these things, which I've been, I'm failing at picking up. Pardon my hands. I have been, uh, doing a great deal of uh, painting in preparation for a couple things but like these uh, they're simple shapes uh, they're supposed to look like spirit stones more stones things like that and I've been adding them because uh, the basing that I'm going with with my current project has a bit of a uh, hybrid between bogland slash uh, uh, kind of some Japanese elements to it and I thought these were kind of nice to be able to make and you, they're really, really cheap and easy. I use the back of a rounded toothpick to put the hole in it. And then all you do is glue it down. Now this was a little bit more ambitious and a really horrible example of my sculpting capabilities. But it's supposed to look a little bit like a um, frog that you would see in some Japanese temples. It's a little rougher. I didn't uh, take a lot of time to sculpt it. But it's also going to be partially buried in a, uh, a larger base. And I wanted to experiment with um, trying to make something like that. So on this uh, very horrible plastic uh, Contemptor Dread that Games Workshop made, I had gotten a long, long time ago as a gift from the family, the Burning Rust Prospero. They knew I liked the horse heresy, and this is uh, one of the things that were in the box. I've tried to make him look less static, but I didn't have anything at the time to uh, change up his pose. So, you know, Contemptor con Dread, not Contemptor Dread, not. But as you can see on the, the uh, base here, we have a couple different blobs that I uh, shaped out on there. Now, this has been glued by uh, with thick modeling glue. You can use uh, super glue, you can use PVA. But once it's dry, make sure you glue it down because it will simply slide off the base. Now I built up a bit of a thing and you can see there's one of those little stones I, which has just been glued on. 
and there's a little bit of cracking and things you'll see in there but that's really good for basing textures and I was working on this as I blot out the sun uh, this is a, a conversion I made for a uh, Space Marine uh, chapter master and so this is basically okay so all the ground that you see in this is the air dry clay the little part directly under his foot that is a piece of plastic card that I took the time to cut notches out and to give a little bit of texture to make it look like a bit of cut stone that's been weathered away and of course we got one little spirit stones on there now he's not done in any way because I ran out of time to finish painting him so he doesn't have like 90% of what I would normally do to one of these guys um, he's just kind of rough and ready but I wanted to show how this would look painted up now once you get some of the extra ground cover you know flocking if you use things like the uh, the oh god the base ready from geek gaming or you get some of the base ready stuff from all terrain or you get kraut cover which I haven't actually investigated yet but I'm trying to get some to investigate and once you get some of that on there once you get a little bit of weathering um, I don't know how well the cameras picking it up but I do do a lot of extra stuff to uh, change up and not make uh, the stones and such look super uh, flat once you start getting some of that on there it looks fantastic and the thing is if you're doing a big project you can get a lot of this done fairly quick just to add a little bit of a touch here and a little bit of a touch there and add it to the basing of uh, well any force you can make little things that you you just add like you can make these little stones you can make these little rocks you make things like that small depending on how much you want to do sculpting you can do sculptures you could use a mold though I would suggest having a, a bit of a release on it a release powder and make cobblestone and so on and so on it's not as pliable and it's not as sticky as um, some of the other options that you could get but it's a lot cheaper and once you glue it down and get it primed and painted most people are not going to be able to tell what you used so if you're looking at trying to get things spruced up a tad and you're on a bit of a budget this is a good place to look and I'll even show you this so I don't know how well it's gonna pick up but in the middle just above the belt and if people want I can talk about what I did to uh, modify this guy right above that belt there was a hole because I didn't use the belt buckle that came with this model that has been filled in with this air dry clay and I used watered down PVA to make sure it's stuck in place and then I painted over it now it's a bit rough and ready but I wanted something to to kind of cover that spot up and look a little bit more natural and that's a another way you can use it you can use it as a gap filler but I would suggest green stuff or you know other solutions like that but in a pinch it can be useful for that but I think if you're trying to spruce up a base there's nothing wrong with going to a cheaper material that's readily available in many parts of the country and uh, I'd assume overseas it's been a while since I've been in uh, Europe so this might be helpful for you or not I don't know it's easy to work with the little folds and cracks actually do in a lot of cases work very very well for rocks stones and you can make a ton of stuff just as easily as pie to add to bases just for small touches so I hope this was a little bit useful I'm not gonna do any on uh, camera sculpting I was a bit rushed today and I barely got some of the stuff ready for the videos and the editing I need to do <laughs> not to complain about it 
it's not a chore it's just I'm late and I'm a little frustrated with that now I can talk about how I did the bases and more detail if people actually want to see me do some of the sculpting for the bases I can do that if you want but it's a very simple process it can be done with as little as a toothpick in some cases um, and you can get some pretty good results is it the best results it can someone that is a professional do better yes but I dare say when you're doing something and you just want to add a little bit of touches and across the larger army and perhaps you just want to add some little bit of uh, extra features maybe some uh, elevation and such to keep your bases from looking really really flat this is a good option the only thing I would caution you is when you make them produce the hills on the base give them a night to dry then take water down I'd say uh, one to one depending on how fluid the uh, the glue you're using is for example I had this uh, thick modeling glue which uh, is a bit runny but it's really good and what I did was I take these all I'd let them I'd tip them off so they slide off put the glue where I wanted them to be put them right on top of it and let them dry again overnight and they're very on there and once you get them primed and painted they're fantastic so that's my one tip for it i hope this was useful let me know if this is useful to you and i'll be doing some more stuff as time goes on i'm going to be touching on uh, baking soda and things that you can add to a baking soda style basing in the future as well so i hope you had a fantastic time and i'll see you next time Bye bye